Hello, Brother Sewing friends and family. Angela Wolf here, Brother Brand Ambassador, and I hope you had a great holiday weekend. So we have a fun show for you today. We've got another Brand Ambassador joining, and wait till you see her messy project. <laughs> That's the only thing I can say about it. Hi, Emily. How are you? Hi, I'm so good and so glad to be here, and I am making a mess. So... <laughs> <laughs> we love messy sewing and now after the weekend we're kind of like cleaning up so if you've never yeah. been here before we are live streaming on brother sewing and crafting youtube and facebook pages and we are actually not live so we will not be bringing your comments up but we'll be watching from the comments so be That's sure to right. say hi if you have questions we always go back and check those out so emily yeah. i'm very excited for this project and i think so many people are going to love this and doesn't have to be as messy as I've seen, but. <laughs> right. Well, I have sewed this project with less messy fabric and it turned out just as beautifully. So I'm hoping that the mess will be worth it for a fun twist on what I've sewn before. But I did just want to point out real quick before I get started that I think a couple months ago, I sewed this cardigan and I'm wearing it and it's finished and I've been loving it. So I did end up taking off the binding that was narrow and I added a wider binding um, for more coverage because it was seeming kind of skimpy. So anyway, I love my cardigan. So the projects that I do sew on here, I wear and I use, and I'm hoping that today's project will be the same. So you know, Emily, I, I'll try to, I'll try to look and see what episode that was because I love that project. In fact, you inspired me to take some sweater fabric and do the same thing. I just made it a little bit longer and I yes. love it. I love it. So, and I love, I'm also, I made what I'm wearing. I love it when we can work on a project and yes. we can wear it. Yes. <laughs> it's wearable. Yes. In fact, yesterday I was talking to my daughter's teacher and um, she was saying, oh, I love this shirt she's wearing. Where did she get it? And I said, I made it. And she was just like so thrilled to hear that and she just was kind of jealous so i actually went and i ordered more of that same fabric and i'm hoping for christmas to sew her like a sweatshirt because it was kind of like a sweatshirt fleece fabric so she can be matching with my daughter she's like young and super cute and it will be <laughs> so that's awesome um, so speaking of wearing what are you going to be making that we can wear today that's right so i'm going to make a hooded cape poncho whatever you want to call it. So um, I'll probably, I will be watching this show and I'll try to make sure I put the link to this full tutorial that's on my website, but you can always go to lifesosavory.com and you'll just be able to search wool cape and you can find this pattern and it does, or this tutorial. The only thing that's an actual pattern is it does come with a hood template. And this is of course like a one size fits all um, template. So I printed this and assembled. It's just a few pages. And then you can cut out um, the hood that goes on a cape that we're just going to DIY, create the size of the cape ourselves. So you can see the mess I'm making already <laughs> with this Sherpa fabric. So I found this really cool buffalo plaid on one side and super um, soft Sherpa on the other, but it is like snowing in here so <laughs> um, grab your vacuum cleaner get your <laughs> so i'm definitely gonna have to clean the house when i'm finished with this and the original one i made out of like a wool i don't think it was real wool but a wool like fabric so it was definitely not as messy and i finished the edges differently and i fully lined the hood because um, you know, that fabric, I wanted it to look nice on the inside and the outside. So this one is going to be a little bit different because I'm not going to line the hood because I want to see both sides of this fabric. So I think we're just going to kind of sew it together. And then I, I need to finish the edges because it's so messy. Um, I, although I do wonder if I just kept pulling at it, <laughs> if I could get it off. And then you, not, not finish the edges. Well, Emily, you're going to be coughing up hairballs for like a week. Well, I was had a crazy sneezing fit. So I'm a little bit nervous that that might happen again. So you might have to cover for me for a minute if I start like sneezing all over. Oh. Um, so I cut out two hood pieces instead of four hood pieces um, because we're not going to line. 
Okay. So I cut out the hood, but I did just want to show you how I kind of eyeball the rest of the cape. And I'm actually going to take off my um, cozy cardigan so it doesn't get covered in fur. Uh, and then, um, so I bought two yards of this fabric and that will be plenty to have a big um, cape and then cut out the hood as well. And I could have cut out four hood pieces, I think from some of the scraps, but just make sure you have enough to kind of, you know, go make a square for the body and then also for the hood. So I am going to fold this in half. And so I think what I'm going to do is, let me just adjust this slightly. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is um, the front and back are the selvage edges down here. And then the side to side is the, is the cut edge. And I feel like I have, you know, well, my arm span is still left of the fabric. So after I cut off the hood from one side. Um, so I'm going to, as much as possible, try to keep the selvage edge so that I don't have to finish that. And then we'll just finish the sides. So this is a super simple shape. You're just cutting a rectangle or square, and then you're trimming um, if it's too long. So I want it below my waist. So definitely not too long. And the side to side, by the time I trim up the shape a little bit, will be perfect. So I'm just going to kind of trim up this piece that I already have. And you then, know, Emily, that there. fabric you have, because it has the the plaid on it, the boxes to I just think of boxes to follow. That will yes. make it so easy to cut it a perfect square. You just follow the print. Exactly. Yes. When I was cutting the hood, I just kind of lined up the hood on one of the lines and then cut and then cut the other side. And so I know at least the bottom will be um, even. Now, I did notice when she was cutting this in the store that it was very hard for her to line up the boxes. Um, in fact, you can see here, look at what a terrible job was oh. done cut on that side. How do you not? not... <laughs> that I'm edge. just saying, how hard could it be to follow the boxes? <laughs> I know. Well, and even just cut on a, so I don't know if they're printed off grain. Um, I don't know, but I will definitely trim those sides. So yes, I am going to just cut a straight line based on the last full box. So I'm, that's how I'm going to trim up the sides. And again, I'm leaving this bottom salvage edge. So after I've cut the sides, then I'm going to fold it into um, more of a square and cut a circle in the center for the neck because I need to be able to get my head through the middle. And the great thing about this hood is because of the shape and the design, you really can't, it can be adjusted for many sizes. And I'll show you how we do that. This was super uneven. That is not even close on the cutting. Okay, so now let's do the same thing on the other side and cut. I think this is the side I cut my hood from. So I have a little bit of um, weird shapes where I cut out the hood. But I think I can even it up. So you with know, the wool, you could cut like a fringe or you could hem or you could just really leave it raw. Um, but on this one, I think I am just going to end up surging these raw edges to try and keep the snow to a minimum. I don't know. You know what would be another fun thing, Emily, for somebody who maybe is watching this that doesn't have a serger, I mean, even folding that Sherpa to the right side over twice and just stitching would look so cute. So cute. Yes. Yeah. So you could easily just do a narrow little roll. That actually would be adorable on the edge there. So right. that's a great I'll idea. <laughs> okay. So now give this a shake. <laughs> we're gonna call this the shaggy the shaggy shake i i don't see so much oh yes i can see stuff yeah falling. It, it's just like floating in the air here um <laughs> crazy okay so we're lining up the bottom and it seems pretty even i think this pattern might be not even printed 
on the grain, but that's okay. It will look pretty even. So double fold, double fold to the center. And now we're going to create the neck hole here in the middle. Okay. So, All right, so just, just to be clear, you folded it once and then you folded it over. Yeah. So, so fold it in half and then in half again so that we have a double fold here in the middle and no raw edges. And then I have my finished edge on the bottom and my shaggy edges on the right and left side. And I, you could do the math and figure this out, like, you know, measure around your neck and do figure out a um, radius like you do for a circle skirt. But because this isn't, doesn't really have to be exact. It really just needs to go over my head and be comfortable. I'm going to just start small and cutting, cut it. And then if I need to cut bigger, I will. So if I cut. Can you put your camera down just a little bit so we can yep. see that corner? Thanks so yep. much. There we go. Um, I'm trying to think if two inches is a good place to start or bigger. Well, you I'm can just, always cut a bigger hole. Go bigger. I know. I'm <laughs> like okay, so let's mark two inches around and see what that looks like. This is a lot of fabric to cut through. I don't think that's going to be quite big enough. But now what you could do, what I'm going to do, is just enlarge it by cutting, you know, another half inch or so off this neck. So then you just keep trying it on over your head. So just I'm just going to keep trying it on because I don't, again, I don't want it like a gaping neck. You know, I want it to be really, um, I think what I'm going to do is make one side the front and just cut it a little bit deeper only on one side of the fabric, and then I'm going to try it on. That's a good idea. And you don't have to worry. This this is all going to be sewn on the hood, so if it's looking not great, you can go with that. Okay, so. This is going to make a good hair day. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think we have a good start. That's cute. Okay. So, so cozy. I just need it to get cool here so I can actually wear it. It is, yesterday was like 70 degrees. So it's hopefully <laughs> by the time this airs the end of December, it will actually be chilly. And I can be wearing this cozy for January. Okay, so uh, now it is just covered. See that? I'm gonna have to really <laughs> give it a good, a good shape. Okay, so. Now we have this and we're going to, like I said, finish the two raw edges and then we're going to sew the hood together and I'll kind of show you how to make this fit whatever size neck hole that you are dealing with. So I'm going to just swing the camera right around over here. Hopefully. Sounds great. Hey, what, um, what sewing machine are you going to be using? Because I know everyone always loves that and especially during the holidays, some people just yes. want a new machine. Some people are thinking of getting one. Yes. So I am going, I think this entire project can be sewn on um, my serger, which is the Simplicity 3734. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I should have eyed that up before we got started here. Can't get it down in the, in the corner. Almost. I know. I just have to adjust, adjust my <laughs> camera you stand here. Mind. So everyone always takes baby yeah. emotions with this tablet before the shows. We're good. Yep. Okay. So oh, can't quite see everything. There we go. Great. Okay. Um. So on the serger, I'm gonna first, I think, just sew the hood together. Oh, you can see it on me. I, I was just going to say, I just want to come over there with a lint roller. <laughs> I don't even think I own a lint roller. I'm going to have to buy one just to, to clean myself up. 
Oh, this is definitely, I did not think through this. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to make the red the outside, but I think this fabric, you really could do whatever you wanted. Um, but I'll keep the Sherpa on the inside. So we're going to sew the curved seam of the hood with the red and black fabric together and then sewing the fur up along there. So if you really didn't want to see this, you'd probably want to change your thread to white or light color. But I'm going to keep the black on there so that when I finish the edges, um, then it will kind of blend in better with the fabric. Um, so to see on the white just, side. Uh, just real quick for those that want a technical um, to know everything going on. You have four yes. threads in there right now? Four I do have all four threads in there. They are all dark colors. They're not all exactly the same dark colors now that I look at it. Got some brown and some black and a little bit of dark gray. Um, I've been sewing a lot of, you know, dark sweater fabric. So I've just kind of had this selection going. And I think I have fur in my eye. Oh, good. So. <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to sew the seam and then see how the hood comes together. This is very thick fabric with the two layers. Um, I don't have any concerns really about this machine being able to handle it, but I am going to sew slower than I normally do while I'm going through the two layers of the fabric. I think I'm finishing the edge on a single layer. Um, not even a concern. And really, I'm more worried about possibly breaking a needle than anything just with the thickness. But you can see that it's sewing really nicely. And I didn't even actually adjust any of the settings. But this will finish it and hopefully stop the crazy fray from happening. So I'll show you close up when I get it. But Actually, we like the fact that you're using some darker threads so we can see that whole thing now. Yes. So white would obviously blend in, but black is going to be great because you're going to be able to see exactly where I've sewn and how those serger stitches are really finishing this fabric um, perfectly. So if you weren't using a serger and you were trying to sew this part of the hood, I would probably sew with a straight stitch. And then maybe try to do a zigzag over to just try and contain some of the fluff. Um, so that would probably be my tip for sewing this without um, a serger. But okay, so Ooh. you can see here, finish this edge great. really nicely and has totally, I think, contained the mess on that. And I love the shape of this hood. It's just really fun and it looks great if you're wearing it, you know, back not on your head or on as well, okay? So, and when I've sewed it before and used two layers, then it will be a little bit smaller in the front because then I would sew the two pieces together on this front neckline and then turn it right side out. And then this would be the finished edge with the lined hood. So we're not going to line it today. So I'm just... <laughs> Gonna brush myself off and keep sewing. <laughs> you know, um, I know somebody's gonna ask, did you have to use any special needles in the serger? No, you don't. This should work with just your standard universal yep. uh, serger yep. needles. So I just have universal needles in from whatever the last project um, was that I was sewing and it's going through just great. So I'm interested to see now here, I'm gonna finish the front of the hood. I think it's going to, I'm not going to feel quite as nervous. Um, not that I was really nervous, but it felt pretty quick. But I think it feels much smoother with the single layer. Um, so no real concerns there. So I can go a little bit quicker. I'm just cutting off just a barely bit, mostly of the Sherpa, not so much of the um, check fabric unless I see where I didn't cut it very well, and then I'm trimming that up. So we're gonna go across the top, grab that serger tail from the other seam, and then sew down the other side, and that really should finish the front of this. So again, I think it would be so cute to double fold over, especially, I probably should have done that around the edge of the hood. Maybe I'll turn it back. 
even after I've searched it, then I won't have to do a double fold. Um, that's so, your serger is so quiet. I just, I'm just thinking you're right there. The camera's right there. And serger is yeah. three feet away. Yes. Oh, okay, yes. That so there's the edge. edge. But I'm actually thinking how cute would that be? I think I'm going to fold it over and stitch it like that. So oh, I like we're going to do a quick change. And I like that a lot. A lot, yeah. a lot. I think that's and I do, very and I have some extra some extra length to play with because of how I normally um, sew this, so it should be just fine. So Emily, um, I have to just ask because I love that you can put all your feet in the front of that machine. What machine are you on? Because yes. I know somebody's going to ask. This is the um, fifty two hundred essence line. And apparently I don't have any power here. So we may or may not be, they're all plugged into the same thing. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> this like same power strip is, is um, powering these machines. Yes, yeah, so I love that it has this um, tray in the front, but sometimes, and it's, you know, well organized, but sometimes they fall out because I take it off to put on the embroidery unit and then I just stash it somewhere and I don't keep it level and then the feet go everywhere. So I was using a specialty foot yesterday and now I don't know where I put my regular foot. So here's one. I don't think that was what I had on before, but should work. Okay. So I'm just going to fold this over a little, maybe a half inch. And then I have white thread on here. And then I think I'm just gonna straight stitch right on the serging to give a little extra detail on the front of that hood. I think that will add just a really cute look there. And I've already finished it, so I don't really have to do a double fold. I think I'm gonna lengthen the stitch just a little bit to three millimeters and I don't really need it to be a super close stitch on here. Again, I just have a universal needle on this machine. And I know people are probably thinking, is there any other feet I could use besides the standard? Yes, you could use the move it foot. That would be fun. A great opportunity to use the move it foot with this project because it flips yeah. over both of those layers so easy. Yes. So you can see that because, again, this is a little thicker, I'm putting one hand behind and just I'm not really pulling, but just giving a little bit of tension in the back to keep it moving um, so it doesn't get stuck because it is, again, two layers of pretty thick fabric. I'm, my needle is sewing on the serge part, so that is a little bit already flattened. Um, and and helping that go pretty smoothly, but the Sherpa is just kind of shaggy and thicker, so um, I just don't want it to get really stuck on one particular spot. So this will just be a cute little detail added on the edge of my hood, and because I had plenty of width, because usually I do so two hoods together, this um should be like this if you wanted to fold over a wider brim i would definitely lengthen the front of your hood a little bit um so you just have more fabric to play with but for i think for this narrow one it should be just fine and i'm going to put your website up down below again for those of you that hopped in a little bit late and are like where do i get the pattern yes. for the hood it's right down below yeah so the hood is a free printable pattern and then, oh, I love it. I mean, it's so, so cute. It actually looks like it's snowing in your living room. <laughs> <laughs> so there may not be snow outside, but there's definitely snow in here. Um, so this, these tails are the key to making this a one size fits all hood. Because depending on the size of your neck hole, you simply overlap these tails more or less. Okay, so make sure that your cape neck hole is big enough to go over your head before you attach the hood 
But once you figure that it's large enough, then you just are going to overlap those ends. Oh my goodness, my shirt. You're going to overlap <laughs> those ends as much as needed. And it really is cute on the front. Um, you know, I love the overlap, but it also allows for that sort of adjustable neckline, depending on how big or small you're making this. And I've actually cut down this hood to make it for my daughter as well, which is really cute. So you kind of just eyeball the general shape and then go with it. Sorry, I need my clips. Go with it to make the child's um, size. So you can adjust that. Okay, so I need to find again, <laughs> sort of the front and back of this that I created. This is gonna be so cute. Well, and it's so warm and cozy. I'm super excited to be able to, I think on, you know, not a super cold day, um, just be able to wear this out and about. Okay, so there's my lower front neckline. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I pin on the hood before we sew that on. So the center of the back, we are going to align right sides together with the center of the back hood, which is easy to find because it's the seam. Okay, so that's the seam that we've already sewn on the back of the hood. And I start from the back because again, we're going to adjust the overlap of our front. So we wanna work from the back forward so we know how much needs to be overlapped. So from that back, I'm gonna work my way around. This fabric does not really have any stretch. So I'm not worried about that. But if your fabric does have a little bit of stretch, make sure that you're not stretching it out as you're pinning the hood on and around. So I'm going to go most of the way around on one side, but then I'm going to stop and go from the other side so I can work on those overlaps together. Now that will be three layers of fabric for the short distance that I'm overlapping. So we're gonna have to sew really slow to make sure that everything hopefully sews together nicely on that level. That's a lot of fabric. So it's a lot of fabric. I know. I just am thinking about this as I'm going. So we so I'm see. just curious if somebody was like, I don't know, maybe they have a thicker fabric than you have or something. Yeah. Would you recommend maybe just basting that together first just to make sure that it's together before you fight with the serger? Not that you have to exactly. fight with the serger, but <laughs> yes, I would, I would run it through the regular machine first to kind of test the waters. Um, especially if you haven't sewn a lot on your serger and are less confident with just experimenting with things and you know broken needles on the serger are a pain so you know yes you could definitely base it the thing is this fabric is really thick but most of it is fluff so the needles aren't actually having to punch through it's not like a leather or you know a vinyl it really the fabric itself is quite thin it's mostly just going through the presser foot because it's so puffy. So I, I really do think it will be fine. Famous last words. Sure is cute. <laughs> okay, so I've overlapped the front here. Okay, oh, yeah. so I've got my crisscross here of the fabric and then the hood on the back, which you know, even if I'm not wearing it, this hood just down the back is going to be so cute. And I'm so glad we added that little detail. So, okay, I'm going to start from the back, warm up a little bit with only two layers of fabric before we move to the three layers of fabric. So definitely feels like a little bit of... Like, I cannot wait to see what this ends up looking like. So a big wad of fabric here going through my machine and sitting on the edge, but hopefully it will be adorable. So yeah, I saw this fabric and I was thinking, what could I make with it? Because it looks so cozy. 
of course, yesterday I was sewing with like a true fur fabric and my daughter just wanted a sweater made out of it. And, you know, the back of fur is not really like nice against your skin. So I was trying to think, how could I, what could I make from her for her with that really fuzzy fabric on the outside <laughs> that she would like? I don't know. I was, I was sewing like um, pillows, um, which then you don't care what the inside looks like. Okay, I'm getting to the thick, so going like really slow here. And sometimes, here's a little tip. If your machine has trouble getting started, I sort of help the hand crank a little bit with my hand, and it sort of gets it started slow and easy and seems to um, help it move along. So that is sometimes what I will do if I'm sewing like this through thick fabric and it's I'm afraid if I start too fast that you know I'll break a needle or something I also want to remind anyone here who's maybe new to surging there's a ton of good videos on brother sews page Emily has yes. some on her YouTube I have some on yes. my YouTube and also remember if your fabric's thicker than what Emily's working on and you can't quite get it under that foot there's a knob on top of the machine and turn that knob lefty loosey righty tighty and it will raise and lower your presser foot a little bit so yes yes that's one so of those you can definitely adjust yes your presser foot your tension differential feed there's so many different things though. so many things you're bored yes. this weekend and you have a hot and you are taking the weekend off for new year's you can binge watch all day long <laughs> yes okay we're almost around to the back we will have to do a quick check to make sure i caught all three of those layers in the front it was just kind of hard to tell as i was sewing around but this machine gets a bonus for sewing through all of that fabric oh it's so cute I think it's all attached <laughs> I think it's all attached okay so there is the front with the crossover which I love and adds such a cozy detail it's going to kind of create you know that cowl neckline to keep it cozy which is another reason why you don't want to cut it too huge um because if especially if you want it cozy that will just keep the hood closer um to your neck so i am doing great not sneezing through this so the last thing that i'm going to do is finish the two raw edge sides of my cape and if you wanted to make this an oval shape or you know, a triangle with the points. I've seen sometimes, you know, where the points are at the front and the back and then on your your wrists. You could get really creative with how this is going to look. Um, I am just keeping a very simple um, rectangle shape. And again, um, you should be able to create this from about two yards of fabric as long as it's um, 60 inches wide. So I'm keeping that full 60 inches on the front and back um, to make sure that it's nice and long. And then the sides are shorter than that. So depending on your height, you might want the 60 to go side to side or front to back. So easy though to cut out the shape and keep it going. So I'm just sewing along the uh, you know, edge of the check. And again, just trimming off tiny bits of the fur, a little bit, <laughs> tiny bits of the snow in the room. <laughs> Probably like floating in the air everywhere. <laughs> I think I'll just end up throwing this in the wash after I shake it to just really make sure that all the extra fuzz is off. Um, and then back in the house probably 10 times this afternoon. And so probably be one where you have to put like a little disclosure. Be sure to empty your dryer lint yes. section when you're done with this, drying this fabric. <laughs> yes, I'm thinking, you know, if I shake it and um, let's see, cut a little bit of an extra long tail because I will put that back through itself. Um, I think if I give it a good shake out, it actually won't lose a lot in the washer and dryer, but 
just to get off the extra because it is such a mess right now. Oh, I just shoot. <laughs> a looper just ran out. It just ran out of thread. Oh, so, I am, I think, going to call it good while we're ahead <laughs> on that one. So let me just, uh, I will try it on for you without the second side completely finished. But let me just show you one little tip here when you have your unfinished um, serger tails. So, you know, this is not going to be caught into a seam here on the edge because I'm just going to leave this as is. And if you cut this, then it will continue to unravel. So you want to make sure you don't just cut that if you're not enclosing another seam. So I like to just take this darning needle. You can also um, fold it back onto itself and sew it with your sewing machine. But my quick and easy way is usually just to take about an inch through with the darning needle and then put those tails through the large eye, which I like, and then pull it through, give it a good little tug. And then you have that finished edge on the front and the back and it won't fray. And I have washed items many, many times and it doesn't seem to come out um, ever. So that's just a great and easy way to finish those loose tails that you might have on your project. That's great. That's a great, great tip too, Emily. Okay. So let's take a look. It's, you know, 95% finished. Drum roll. <laughs> oh my uh, goodness. That is so stinking cute. And then you can wear it down and it is so cozy. The back. Oh, I love it. So it is, it feels very warm and I'm so excited. Uh, yeah, to wear it this winter. I think it's going to be even cozier than the, the wool one I made was more of a fall, um, you know, thickness, but this, I think this I could wear even when it's pretty chilly, if I had a sweater or something underneath. So there you go. This edge you know, is finished completely. And this one, I just need to zip up and finish the rest, but you definitely get the idea and you're not missing anything by me not fighting with my surgery to replace that thread right now. So, you know what, Emily, that is so cute. I'm just thinking, okay, that would be great with a pair of jeans, just hanging so out, cute. going out to the campfire, but yeah. it would also, I'm looking at that so stylish with a pair of maybe faux leather pants and some boots. You could dress yes. it up and wear some little black gloves that would totally dress it up or make it casual. Love it. Yep. And you can adjust the length. Like this is, you know, a bit long. Well, I mean, I like it, but if you don't want it quite so long or you, again, like you want to change the shape and make it, you know, a curved edge, you really can adjust that. And then it would also play with the style as well, depending on, you know, the shape you make. So, oh, absolutely. So I'm just, since we're going to be watching this from the comments, I would love to know everyone that's watching are you going to make this and are you going to dress it up or dress it down? Because I could think of so many great opportunities for this. And that literally took less than 50 minutes from yeah. live to start yeah. the show to here. That's and you're finished. And I'm finished. It is very, a, you know, very much a simple project. And um, depending on your fabric, you know, you're going to change a few things, how you finish the edge, how you make the hood. But the general sense of the project is the same whether you're choosing a wool fabric or this is great out of fleece too especially for kids make it a fleece um cape and but it's still yeah it's an easy project and i think turns out pretty good the hood is generous in the size so hopefully fits all of you i love it so emily yes. this is such a great project perfect before New Year's, because for those of us like myself that aren't, <laughs> I'm usually just hanging out, sitting by the fireplace, this is going to be fantastic. <laughs> totally. Yeah, you can make it out of like, a, you can make it like a robe to wear around the house, whatever. So many options. I'm uh, thinking when Wynn is going to get a little decor. I, that's yeah. what I should see if I can find one with some fish on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
fun fabric and make it cute. So yeah, so many awesome. options. And this one is cozy inside and out. So I'm excited to wear it. I love it. it. So I'm going to put your website up below for those of you that popped in later or you're like, what is your website? It's right yeah. down below. You can see that Life So Savory. That is where you will find that pattern. I also put my website and brothers in case you're bored this weekend, you can binge watch our YouTube channels, which would be fantastic. Yay. And if you'd like to go back and watch this from beginning to end, if you're on Facebook, share it to your page. That's the easiest way. And if you're on YouTube, you can share it to watch later and be yep. sure to subscribe to the page. Click on the button. Anything else? What are you doing for New Year's? Oh, I had no plans. <laughs> I don't even know. It feels too far away. Well, so we're, uh, yeah, I don't have any plans. So we'll see. Maybe something will come up last minute. I know. I My whole goal is just to try to stay awake till midnight. But you know what? It doesn't happen very often. I love my mornings. And if I do that, I'll miss my mornings. So <laughs> yes, our goal usually was to stay up till 11 when we lived in the Midwest to be able to watch the ball drop at 11. And then we moved to mountain time and I was super excited because I thought the ball will drop at 10. Yay. <laughs> but they don't. They delay it. And we can't even wait till midnight. So it's worse. It's worse. So, it's the one time that one time that mountain time is worse. So So my dear friends in Australia, I like to watch yours because that's usually in the time span that yes. I'm awake. <laughs> yes. That's so right. what a great project, Emily. Thank you so much. And all of you watching, thank you. I we wish you a very merry, well, let's see, this would be a Happy New Year's. What Happy day is New it? Year. That's right. <laughs> and for those of you that are going to be around on Thursday, we also have a show for you then. Looking forward to seeing you then. But those of you that are taking off for New Year's, have a wonderful time. Emily, great to see you. Thank Everyone you. else, have a wonderful day. And brother, thank you for letting your ambassadors take over your page. Till see next you time. time. <laughs> Bye.